right, cool. Where are you exactly? Is this a... I'm in Rapid City, South Dakota um, at the arena here. Uh, it is called Rapid City Arena. Oh, so, okay. Because this, you guys are on tour right now. Yeah, we are. Yeah. And who is it with again? Uh, we're out right now with Godsmack and uh, Stand was on, uh, but they hopped off. A tray you hopped on. A tray you hopped off. And now I prevail is on. For I think the rest is is I prevail. Okay, so I'm assuming you guys are the opening act because you don't have as many songs, right? Are you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. We're we're opening. Yes. So how many songs do you play? Because um, I mean, right now there's only two singles out. Are you, are you playing original songs that haven't been released yet? Or are you doing covers? Or Yes, doing... yes. Yes, so there is a cover and, uh, you know, it's opening. So we have 30 minutes. Um, and it's, it's seven songs, all unreleased with, with uh, one cover. Um, so, yeah, we're, we're playing unreleased material right now from our record. And nothing from Five Finger Death Punch or Falling in Reverse? Actually, Actually, yes, Five Finger Death Punch. We do play one Five Finger Death Punch song. Okay. Is this so? Is this the first podcast you did? Because I tried to find interviews with you and I couldn't find any. I uh, I've done others, but uh, or I've done like a few uh, like small things here and there. I think they're just not out yet. Um, we did several during Louder Than Life. There's like a whole breast tent that we sort of went around and did a lot before. Um, but yeah, there's the. I've not really been like personally interviewed like uh, very often, you know, I've had very short, you know, five minutes sort of things like, what's your band? Where are you from? How did you get there? And, you know, but yeah, n not really. The answer is probably not. Okay. Yeah. Cause I was just trying to figure out like your story. I mean, all I know is that you were introduced to music at 13 from your sister and guitar hero. And then you just yeah. started playing local bands and that's kind of all we, all I know. And then you obviously you joined falling in reverse and played bass yeah so, but how did you go from the local bands to falling in reverse because that's a pretty big jump right yeah so i'll tell you um i was from like probably 17 i'm 25 now but uh you know when i was like 17 i started making videos of me uh singing like for youtube like youtube cover videos okay and um i did i was like a pretty big falling in reverse Fan, and especially that the new songs uh i think are pretty you know excellent and you know exceed what's coming out now i i really like that stuff uh, and I, I really loved it uh when i was making those videos so i made lots of videos doing falling in reverse songs and um you know that's sort of like uh i guess that emo wing of world tour sort of bands um and i sort of got discovered uh i think uh, you know, a, a lot of bands watch the, the covers that people do there. So I, I don't think a lot of people realize that like most bands watch like every cover. <laughs> they, they might not comment, but they, they they watch the stuff. You know, they, really? they that see. is interesting. I, I think it's true. I mean, I might be wrong. I might it might not be the case always, but I think most bands probably watch even like the cover, even like the co covers of the hundred views or something on YouTube. I think most bands see uh, because it's kind of fun to like watch, watch, you know, if, if people care enough about your song to like learn it, like through, but how through. would you have that much time to go through? Uh, I mean, if you're a band like falling reverse with millions of followers, yeah. there's gotta be a lot of covers out there. Yeah. He, he's got time now. He watches, he watches everything, you know? <laughs> uh, and, uh, he, he's he talking about me. the singer, Ronnie. Yes, I am. Yeah. But, uh, he discovered me through, uh, uh, through my YouTube videos, and when I was like 21 or, or so, I was on tour with my my band, which is called The Worst of Us, and uh, I was on tour with them for my first like tour ever. I was you know tour, but I'm driving, I'm driving the 12 passenger with the trailer, and you know I'm driving everywhere, barely alive, you know. Um, and he he flew me out for a few days to uh, rehearse with them. Um, and it didn't work out the first time. Uh, they sort of four days in, they were like, uh, we don't think we have time to, you know, add you to the mix or whatever. So I was You're devastated. Singer, right? Yeah, You're but I was, uh, I, was, I was added to the, the band at that time to play guitar, but like third guitar, like uh, like keyboards and guitar, like something, something crazy to get me in just because they wanted me for my vocals. But okay. uh, 
they, they were sort of a job made up for me so that I could, you know, get added in vocally. Um, but then, you know, that didn't work out. But we stayed in touch and, um, you know, Ronnie was really nice to me uh, when I was younger there. And he was, uh, you know, he gave me a shot. So wait, how old were you when he first called you? I was 21. And then that didn't work out. And then about two years later, uh, right before the pandemic hit, uh, he had an opening in the band for bass and he gave me another chance there. And then COVID hit. So I was sort of in limbo for a long time thinking, oh, my God, this is my big opportunity. And then it's gone. <laughs> it's like the COVID thing kind of screwed me there. But uh, yeah, then I played with them for like a year or two, like you know, probably a year and a half or something like that. I did one tour and a live stream. and. Uh, you know, we, uh, you know, we had a lot of issues like relationally and stuff. Um, so, you know, he, he's, a, he's the man, you know, he's a great songwriter and I respect him a lot, but, uh, you know, I, I wasn't meant for that band, uh, especially for a long period of time, but it was a, a fantastic experience. You know, I learned a lot, um, and I'm very grateful to him and, uh, those guys for, uh, giving me the opportunity because I probably wouldn't be here, you know? if I hadn't done that, uh, but I became connected with Jason um, while I was doing that. Uh, I had, we had a mutual friend uh, who introduced us because he was looking for a singer for years, like two or three years. And uh, yeah, I, uh, I happened to, you know, get out of that gig um, when he was like desperate for a singer. And um, I went and tried out while I was still with, uh, the other band and uh you know he he sort of said oh well like i need a bass player that can do vocals too and i said well i don't want to do it if i'm not the singer man uh, so wow. you know i I turned, I turned him down and uh he said okay i, I understand uh, good luck and we parted ways sort of there and then i uh you know i sort of had a falling out with the falling in reverse camp and uh i was uh you know, unemployed. So uh, he caught wind of that and we started talking again. And then one thing led to the next and I got the job that I wanted, you know, sort of a blessing in disguise as uh, my mom says all the time. So yeah, that's, that's pretty much the story. Uh, I was just, an, I was an internet singer and I got really, really lucky and picked up and, you know, here we are. Well, so, but when you first got that call at age 21, and yeah. and it's like you get the phone call and the guy just says like, "Hey, it's uh, Ronnie from Falling in Reverse." Like, do you not believe it, or does somebody call you before and say, "Hey, this is my Ronnie's publicist. He's gonna call you," or how does that work? Uh, he messaged me on or, or or he tweeted a photo of me, uh, a photo of my cover or something, like a screenshot, and he said, "Somebody help me find this kid." And then I messaged him on Twitter and I said, "Hey, that's me." Like, what, what do you want to do? And he's like, can you fly out tomorrow? We're leaving for tour in nine days. And I was like, yeah, dude. To be honest with you, if you want the real story, and if you want the real dirt here, I was on tour with my band. And, like, so I, I'm, like, the singer, and I was the singer and guitar player of my band at the time. So, like, I was, you know, pretty essential. And when I got that, you know, I had that conversation with him, and I was so overwhelmed. I never, I'm not a super emotional person, but I fucking bawled my eyes out man like i was so it was so overwhelming to tell my band that i'm like guys i gotta go and they're on their first tour you know they were like what yeah the fuck? you know it's, it's brutal for them i'm sure i'm sure they, they like, understand sort of though me. because like they, <laughs> yeah, yeah, want, yeah. they want the best for you and like if any of my friends yeah. had that opportunity i would be like of course you got to take that right but we're like in south Carolina, so we're from massachusetts and uh we're like, you know, in South Carolina or something like that. And, uh, you know, uh, it, it, we're not like close at home. So they're like in the middle of nowhere, like far from home. And I'm like, guys, I got to go. Like, I don't know, put me on the laptop or something or like put me on the, uh, yeah, they, they like tracked me for the four days that I was, yeah, it was pretty bad. Um, it was like a, a, the situation was like, if those guys weren't like awesome guys that were like totally had my best interest in mind, like I'm sure I would have gotten like, you know, kicked out of that band or something. You know what I mean? It's like, I was really lucky that, those, uh, you know, those guys are my best friends. So, uh, 
I, I, I was really lucky in that sense, but. So you're still uh, friends with them and to this day. Oh yeah. Uh, those, those guys in my band, I'm still in that band too. The worst oh. of us. Uh, I, I still, you know, I, I, uh, it's, it's sort of like me and my best friend's project and he's a great artist, um, like visual artist and graphic artist. And I write music. Like I, I, I play guitar bass and I program all the drums and write, you know, 99% of that stuff. Um, it's, it's sort of like my, you know, outlet for all the stuff that I want to hear in music, but, um, you know, I don't always get, so it's, it's pretty hectic, crazy. There's lots of death metal and rap stuff in there. You know, it's crazy. It's not exactly commercial, but you know, I have fun with it. Uh, but yeah, I'm definitely still, definitely still big time tight with those guys. I talk to them pretty much every day. Okay. Well, so you tell me a little bit about the time that you did have in falling in reverse, like, cause you guys toured with Papa Roach and asking Alexandria. And then you played, like you said, the louder than life and all these other big festivals, Rocklahoma, Summerfest, like, you must have made a lot of connections through those touring. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, I I definitely like met a lot of people that you know. I was shocked. I mean, for me, like even you know, with with Ronnie, Ronnie was sort of like a hero to me when I was a kid. Uh, he was sort of, uh, you know, even that was shocking. Like, you know, working with someone like him because I was watching him when I was, you know, like eight years old, man. Like that situations video in the in the high school where they're all like i don't know if you remember it but they're ba they basically like destroy a, an, an entire high school and like <laughs> it's, it's pretty awesome it's a good video yeah. but you know I, I that was like very it was that was shocking enough for me that you know you know he became someone that i was around uh just in a normal setting and you know you get used to that stuff too you know you're meeting all, all sorts of people and i, I remember what he's I was with him. It, this was at Louder Than Life, I think, maybe two or three years ago. But uh, he, him and Danny uh, Orsnop from Asking Alexandria are pretty, pretty close friends. And uh, he uh, came into the room. And <laughs> Ronnie, Ronnie liked to embarrass me a little bit, but uh, he, he was. I remember he pointed at me when Danny walked in and said, "This guy loves your music," and he, he's like, "This guy loves you. He loves you, man." And I mean, it's true. You know, I was like, "Yeah, dude." Like. <laughs> I grew up listening to your music, you know, but it's sort of normal now, you know, the connections are, were essential and I wouldn't be here without those connections. And that's why I always say, you know, I'm, I'm grateful for that experience, despite how, you know, it might've not ended the way that, you know, anyone wanted it to end. I don't think, you know, um, I'm, I'm very grateful for that time because it, it, it sort of prepped me for, you know, now I'm on my own and I'm fronting a band. So it, it sort of prepped me. For, um you know big stuff i was playing big shows man it was like you know that that louder than life or blue ridge you know that was 40 40 to 60 thousand people so, you know those those ticket sales or something like that so it was very like whoa you know but uh it yeah it, it was it was all preparation i think like the, i mean the, the universe <laughs> acting and preparing me for you know what was to come next so but it's yeah. very different playing bass and singing backup than than being the front man, right? I mean, that's like a totally different ball game. Yeah, well, I, I, I'll be honest with you, man. I'm not really like a bass player. Um, I had to learn sort of how to play, um, especially, you, you know, I think a lot of people see Falling in Reverse as, as a sort of emo, uh, you know, classic emo band or whatever. But some of those songs are pretty technically difficult. Um, a couple that come to mind are like Born to Lead and Guillotine and, and some of those, you know, some of those are like, fucking, like I'm, I had a really, I had a strap. Luckily I had COVID. So I had like nine months to like, I practiced every day. I, I definitely put, you know, a thousand hours easily into the instrument so that I could, you know, I, I really, it was imperative to me that I did a good job. Um, so, yeah, I, I'm not a bass player. I became a bass player for that gig because, you know, I was, I was brought in for my singing voice and for uh, for what it's worth, too. I, I just learned how to sing, too. Um, I, 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 I've always been able, like, I, it's, there's, a difference, there's a difference between, like, you can sing and you know how to sing. And, uh, you know, I, I could sing before, but now I know how to sing. And, and back then, even... You know, his parts that I was covering were very difficult 
and you know i was fitting all that that gig was like fitting a mold sort of and uh this gig is like being myself i guess so, okay yeah, if that like kind of makes sense like i had to you know you know after the show too it's like okay well don't do this and do uh i didn't like when you did that or do this differently you know and then when i you know finish these shows like i'm the person saying can i get more support here can you know uh can you help me with the vocals here? And, uh, you know, I get a, you know, I get a chance to do things sort of my way, so to speak. And, uh, it's going good. And, you know, uh, I'm, I'm like really happy with how everything's going. So. But, but isn't Jay, it's Jason's band. So doesn't he kind of direct yeah. you as to what he wants? Of course. But, you know, Jason isn't, isn't like that. Uh, it, it, of course it's, you know, it's his, uh, project but he wants it to be a band and being a band isn't getting directed by one person that's playing in a band so in falling in reverse i was playing in a band oh, okay is that why and, you ended up leaving because you didn't want to be is it, you said you had a did you have a falling out with ronnie or is it just it just didn't work out yeah i mean i i can't get i mean hopefully for obvious reasons i can't get into like super deep detail but yeah uh you know, I, I uh, we're like cool, like it's it's all good, but um, yeah, we, we we sort of never mashed, I guess. Okay. But um, uh, yeah, but Jason's so different. Uh, he he wants it to be a band, and we he always says like, uh, well, it has to be fun. That's what he says. And first of all, it has to be fun, and there's nothing worse than when you're in a band and you're like walking on eggshells around people because they're unpredictable and uh you know just intense like hot, like intense energy all the time but i'm i'm when i'm done with this interview i'm gonna go into my green room with my entire band and we're all gonna hang out everyone's gonna be cool and we're gonna have a good time we're gonna listen to music we're gonna watch you know whatever we're gonna watch together or whatever and we're we're, we're friends like primarily and, yeah and that's that's, that's what's so different and and it's not a, uh, you know, it's not my band or his band. It's our band, and uh, it's just different, man. Uh, Jason is 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 different than other people uh, that okay. I've worked for, you know. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. One last question about Ronnie because yeah, he's just like, yeah. so fascinating. But the whole the whole feud with I think this was after you left the band, but I'm sure you know you have connections and you know, or you have an opinion on this. I, I don't know if you want to say, but the whole feud with him and Sebastian Bach, I found that so fascinating because they're both talking shit online to each other. And I'm, I'm looking up. I don't know a lot about falling in reverse. I'm looking at Ronnie's like, you know, like his rap sheet and stuff. I'm like, I, this doesn't seem like a guy that you want to fuck with. And Sebastian Bach is saying like, I'll introduce you to rock and roll anytime uh, in person, man. Like you name the time and the place. And like, so I don't know whatever happened to that. Uh, was there going to be a fight? Like I heard some rumors that Ronnie knows some pretty rough guys and they were going to wait for Sebastian after a show and jump him or something. Like, do you have any knowledge of this? I don't have uh, like direct knowledge of it, but what I will say is that, do you, you know what the basis of the argument is, right? So they, they, uh, yeah, because they said, laptops, uh, right? yeah, that you guys were using laptops um, so I guess you could come, you know, if, or you're using laptops uh, to, for the vocals or not. Yeah. Uh, so my opinion is, is that Ronnie is right. And, uh, you know, every band under the sun. I mean, the, the other problem with this is that it breaks the, like, the fan to artist, like, uh, immersion, I guess is the word. Uh, or the, like, the, not, maybe not immersion, illusion, I guess. Uh, the, like, fans don't give a shit if you use laptops or whatever you're using to make your show good, they care that the show is good. Um, so while I think that he is right about the, uh, the subject, you know, he, he might be right about, you know, all bands use laptops. Why is this even an argument? He's right about that for sure. Um, and it's crazy that like old heads are coming at him like that. Um, I don't think that they're right in this situation, but all of them are wrong for breaking the like artists to fan very they don't need to know about the laptops man like they they don't want to they don't care about that they want to come and see your show and all the people that like 
that matter that are like buying your stuff and coming to your shows and love your fucking band, they're not thinking about the laptops. You know what I'm saying? Well, kind of, but like, you don't want to have like a Milli Vanilli situation where like the people on stage are just miming or like, uh, who was the latest one? There was some pop singer. She was singing and she got into a fight and then like the music kept going. I mean, it's one thing to have like, you know, backing vocals on a, on a laptop or like keyboards. Yeah, yeah, if you don't yeah. have a keyboard player or something like that. But if it's like the full singer singer is just miming the, the, I, I don't understand the point of going to the concert then I could just listen to it on my CD. Sure, but there's also the atmosphere of the concert and all the all the fans in the event. And, uh, you know, people at the end of the day, are, even if a band is like terrible live, they're probably going to hear what they want to hear. And uh, they're going to have a great time because their favorite band is playing and they just want to see their favorite band. And like this whole discussion going so far. I mean, Ronnie is he is a hilarious guy. He put Sebastian in his music video and dropped the piano on his head, man. He's funny. Like he knows what he's doing. And so like, he's funny. He's not violent though. He's not, he's not somebody that Sebastian should be worried about. No, dude. I don't, I don't think so. I mean, he, he says, he says crazy shit, but I think he's like a normal, nice guy deep down. You know, he, I don't think he's trying to fucking kill people. And shit. <laughs> and he's just, he's stirring it up and, and going crazy because people love it, dude. They're going to watch it. They're going to tune in. They're going to, you know, they're going to, he's, there's, he, there's more people that are going to find him and love him for just the bombastic shit, man. That, like he knows he's very smart. He knows what he's doing with that stuff. But the, the, the center of the argument though, is uh, it doesn't really matter for 95% of people going to the concert. They, they don't care about the laptops. They won't even, it's so good now, you know, the technology is so good that you're not even going to know, the layman isn't going to notice what's on the computer and what's not. But Ronnie's a singer, dude. He's singing. He's not faking anything. You know? oh, okay. Well, that's he's, good to know. He's, yeah. He's a beast. Yeah. He's, he's super talented and he's not, it's not big, man. But, you know, there's a lot of, like, I would want my show to sound as good as it possibly could, especially if there's a bunch of digital, you know, stuff in the background uh that that beefs it up like i want that i'm not gonna it's like i use tracks in my like when i was playing in local bands i use that shit too because it sounds amazing and i want to give the fans an amazing experience there's nothing wrong with that you're talking about like effects that can change the voice like the auto-tune and stuff like that no i'm talking like like sounds you know like uh uh like like if you have a I, I don't like with my band at home or with our band here we don't like use a keyboard player live like to get the piano right. part you know what i'm saying it's yeah, a, no, that's totally you know, different than like than having pre-recorded lead vocals i think that's different even pre-recorded background vocals i don't think that's that bad but you're right i mean i think some people were really purists about this like eddie trunk and stuff they want everything to be live and then other people like they don't care if, if it's all freaking pre-recorded. Yes, so. but all, all the respect to them and that sentiment, but like their favorite bands are using tracks, you know? Like Kiss and... I don't know. I don't know for sure. I can't like, I'm not going to no, name I, I think it's pretty docu well documented. Kiss uses at least some tracks. Or like, what was what was the old, old school version was like, oh, the, we use the tape for... The, the, there was like a I can't remember what it's called but oh this band's on tapes is what they used to say or something like that you know that's been a thing for for you know 30 or 40 years or something like that like it's not yeah. new uh, it's just and, interesting and, you're right though it's like I feel like the fan what do you call it the fan to band uh barrier it's almost like I was having this conversation yeah. with another guest about how just we know too much information in the world i mean yeah. why do i don't know if you're a sports fan but like why does why do people need to know what the pittsburgh steelers salary cap issues are like it, it's not our business like we shouldn't we should just watch the game and enjoy they it just want to watch the football game man they yeah yeah um, it's too much and, and, you know five percent of people uh, that are football fans like are interested in that shit and that's that's cool or whatever but there's like no need to talk about that i mean it, and this gets into the you know personal lives too of like People don't need to know who I've dated and this or that. You know what I'm saying? It's like unless there's, there's somebody there's famous, a, then we want we probably yeah, want to sure. know. Sure, but you know, it's all like like keep that barrier, man. There's we we need to have like more space in the production side too. It's like 
they don't need to know how your your uh, your backdrop is attached to the truss going across the stage and why you know how many times you need to fold it before like you can put it back in the road kit. You know, it, it's all just too much. You're, you're so right about the there's there's like yeah. too much information out. And there's too many people that, oh, I mixed a band in a 300 cab room one time. This is all fake, man. It's like, you know, there's all the uh, plenty of people that, you know, think they know what's going on, too. And they, they just don't. And, uh, you know, I'll, I'll defend, you know, I, I'm, I'm, I'm totally willing to defend Ronnie on that shit because, you know, he, he's generally speaking right about it. But I just think it should be talked about. Yeah, no, absolutely. OK, so moving on to the new band. Flat yeah. black. Yeah. So Jason Hook is so funny because I uh reached out to him when he right when he left Five Figure Death Punch. And I was like, hey, if you want to come on my podcast, we can talk about your next project. This was in like 2020 or whatever. I first yeah. started. And he goes, Yeah, sure, man. I'll, I'll let you know when I have something to promote. And now, so finally, uh, we I, then he still blew me off, but but now we can talk about his project at least. So talk about flat black uh, black and how it came together. Uh yeah, so you know, that the things lined up where I was out of a gig and he needed somebody and uh, our negotiations worked where I, you know, I could do the job that I wanted to do, um, which was being the singer. And we started probably a year and a half, maybe yeah, about a year and a half ago. He started, uh, you know, he had plenty of material from his downtime, um, not being in uh, the other band he was in. and. Uh, we uh, brainstormed with, a, you know, we worked with some producers um, and we sort of stormed on it with a couple of different people. Um, and we, we made uh, the vocal producer is Sahaj, uh, Sahaj from Raw, if you're familiar with that band. Yeah, I had him on the show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's a yeah, cool yeah. guy. He's, yeah, Super he's, smart. My, my, he's my man. He is very, he's very smart. But uh, yeah, I, uh, I flew to his house for a week and a half and I didn't even know the guy and I stayed at his house with his, his like family and everything. I got to know him very quickly. Luckily we, we hit it off, but uh, I sit, I sat in his home studio for about a week and a half. And then we, we wrote the songs together uh, with instrumentals and uh, we, me and him wrote uh, songs together and, and finished them up. And uh yeah, that's that's pretty much where it went. And then uh, Jason met the drummer RJ uh, Rob Pierce. Um, RJ is his nickname, but uh, he, he met him years ago. And they, you know, he was like, "You're the drummer for my next band." And he said, "Okay." And they, you know, it was sort of history with them. So they've been together wow. for a while. And then we, uh, um, through a reference, I think that was a uh, Doc Coyle from bad wolves uh oh, yeah, I had him on the show too. <laughs> yeah he's he's cool too i've never met him but i've watched oh him. he's he really seems, cool yeah he seems like a cool guy but uh that's how is ahead. that how you met the bass players is that what you're saying or yeah he was suggested uh, oh, okay. by doc and uh we we met him hit it off and he's also a uh great singer too uh which oh. i need uh for you know, sort of, so I can breathe here and there during the set. So, wait, so who's uh, his dad? Because it said in the press release that he's yeah. the son of a legendary rock music photographer. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Henry Diltz is his dad, and he's, you know, sort of, you know, you, if, if you're curious, you can go through his Instagram, but he's taken photos of, you know, a lot of, a lot of people that are like been in big magazines and big productions. You know, he's, he's definitely, you know, that status of, of photographer. Um, and like, you know, he, he's a super nice guy too. We, we, uh, he came and took photos for us and of course they were immaculate. So, um, Perfect. yeah, but yeah, they, they, uh, the, the band guys though, the, you know, what's most important is we get along and, uh, we're living together, dude. It's, it's tight. We're on the road, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's not easy uh to get along with people that you're like you don't really have space from but we uh we do get along very well and it makes me really hopeful because i really think that that's the downfall of every band is the relation you know relational stress and uh you know, yeah i don't know how you guys do it, I, it you know? 
Yeah, it's got to be hard to be that in close quarters with people for that long. Yeah, well, there's, you know, we have days off. And if you need to get away, you can get away. Like today, for example, uh, I woke up earlier than the rest of the band. So I went to the venue early. I had breakfast by myself. And then I went to the gym by myself. And I worked out by myself. And I had, you know three or four hours before I had to interact with a single person. You, you know, you have options. There's there's ways to mitigate it, to to create space. And and part of it is knowing, you know, what's knowing yourself up here and uh, how long you can handle things. And, uh, you know, do I need some space? Am I, you know, for me, uh, I like am a moody person. So and I wouldn't say that I'm mean or anything like that, but I just have to be careful with, um, you know, I have to sort of check myself and be like, okay, maybe you need to take some time, take a walk and take some space because you don't want to say something that's not you, you know, that you don't mean or something like that. And, uh, you know, part of it's being, you know, aware of yourself and what you need for yourself. And, uh, you know, there's a yeah, so hundred people that will, sorry, go ahead. No, I was going to say, so is Jason, cause he's a little bit older than you guys. So is he kind of like, is he like a big brother type or is he, is he more like a father figure to you? Or, I mean, cause he's not, you're, he's, he's older than you guys. Or, I mean, like by like at least 20 years, right? Yeah. But it's not something that ever really crosses my mind. You know, uh, I guess it, it's like, I, I'm, I, I feel like I'm sort of little brother to everyone in the band. Um, and, but that's not something that I ever really like, I'm never consciously thinking about it. Cause I don't feel like, you know, I'm, they don't make me feel, this is like one thing, other thing I love about my band is like, I have so, I'm, I'm like respected by them. Mm. And like in other band, in other bands, it's like my age is constantly referenced. So you're so young, you don't get it. You don't know anything because you're so young. And like, that's cool. I get that. I understand. Like, I, I guess I've done that to other people in other situations, but uh, you know, I don't enjoy it. It's not like a good feeling to be like, said oh you're young and dumb every five seconds uh and no one in my band does that to me uh you know there's sort of a, a respect between us it, and you know he might be have, you know there might be a difference in age but i don't feel it i guess and uh i mean we all lift weights together and shit you know he, he's the, the, those guys are fucking they got the youthful vigor man they're ready to <laughs> They're ready right. to, they, they lift weights with me. They go, they go hard with me and, uh, we, we stay up late and we, uh, no, nobody parties really. So like, even I'm, I'm a little bit young, but like, I don't even drink anymore or anything. Uh, so we, we don't party or, or anything like that, but we definitely like get up to the antics and, you know, uh, my favorite part is just, we just listen to music before we play the show, like 30 minutes before we just slam music super loud. and. I love like death metal and uh, stuff that most people probably like 1% of the population actually enjoys. So uh, I'm always exposing them to like super crazy technical, like death metal that no one listens to, but I'm like, we gotta, we gotta get some of this in the songs guys. Like this is so sick, isn't it? And they're pretty open. I mean, it's, I think it's hard for like old heads to like hear new stuff and be like, Oh, like this is new and different. But like they're pretty open, and like I, I I will show them, you know, pretty crazy stuff, and and they're like, oh, that's cool, I like that part, or something like that, you know. Like, why? Like, uh, tell me some uh, bands that you are interested in that they didn't know about. My favorite band is called Shadow of Intent. It's like a, uh, I think they call it symphonic blackened death core or something like that. So it's uh, it's pretty crazy. It's uh, it's wild, and I love like deathcore vocals like i love crazy like you can't understand what they're saying i love that stuff. <laughs> so uh yeah that and like i really like aborted which is like a death metal band from the 90s and, and 2000s and white chapel too is one of my favorites and uh, uh chelsea grin um sort of you know the, the myspace deathcore era is the stuff that i really like that's what they call it huh. um but yeah i like super super heavy stuff and uh and and they like uh you know they're more of like you know jason loves van halen and um you know we're, we listen to lots of like 
you know, what, what winger and rat and stuff, bands like that. And they expose me to that stuff. And I hear stuff that I like in it too, because, you know, those bands were huge because they had songs and death metal will never be huge because they never have songs, but I still love it. Like I can't deny that. I like, you know, you, I don't know. It's like the banana lappy taffy, dude. Like everyone hates it, but like I'm not gonna lie, I kind of fucking love it. I know, I know, I know. Great analogy. I hate that one too. Yeah. Yeah, most people do. Yeah, that's funny. No, but that's yeah. You can bring those elements into because I think that's what's cool about. I mean, I've only heard two songs, obviously, from the band because there's only two out. Uh, But the song "Lack of Respect," I mean, that's great. Talk about that song and what is that about exactly? Is it just a general? Like it could mean whatever you want it to mean, or is that about somebody in particular? Uh, I mean, you know, I think it would be easy to say that to spark controversies, things like that. But uh, I think me and the the uh, other band members throughout our careers have experienced. Uh, we sort of have a lot of, you know, parallels between us of, you know, moments where, uh, you know, we've gotten that sort of lack of respect that is uh, coined in the song and. Uh, you know, there, for for me, uh, I yeah, at many avenues of my struggle of trying to make this a reality of, of a career, um, you know, I've been pushed down. Where I, I've you know, I've been made smaller, and uh, that that's what it's about. It's about uh, it's about like sort of the oppressive force of you're trying to like sprout your wings and fly right and like yeah. you're, you're and you're you feel like you something. are you you're able to do it like you feel like you have the talent you're just trying to convince the world you got it and uh for, for me it was always i always knew that it was in me you know and i i i took i i did other things to try to get my foot in the door in any way that i could but uh you know, I was always, you're the young guy, you're, uh, you gotta, you gotta pay your dues. There was always, I always wasn't, I was never respected. And, uh, and until now, really. And uh, I, I never got, I never got the respect that I felt I deserved. And I know that other members, uh, you know, of the band and their experience and their long, uh, longer than me, you know, their longer careers they had the exact same feelings. And I think part of the reason we get along so well is because of those parallels. And, uh, you know, it, it's, it's just, it's pretty strange how, how many stories we have in common uh, where, you know, we're sort of the easygoing people and we just get like absolutely shit on in every, you know, it's just turn. Oh, fuck. Oh, fuck. You know, it's like, but yeah, I've, I've been pushed down many times and I know the other guys have. So that song really spilled out, you know, it just uh, at times you have the writer's block and it takes months to write a song. But that one was just. <laughs> yeah. So how do you deal with that lack of disrespect? Because or lack of respect, excuse me, because I, I feel like it's the same thing for me. It's like, I feel like I, I'm good at this at podcasting, but it's like trying to convince other people, trying to convince publicists and bands. It's like no, I'm good. I'll I'll do a good interview. Yeah. Um. I uh, I don't think I dealt with it in the past. Um. Well. Uh. And I guess my way of dealing with it now is is getting it out in music. But I was sort of always a pushover. Uh. When I've been younger and working with other people. And I always, you know, I always said, oh, okay, okay, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. You know, I was always that guy because I didn't want to cause stress or, you know, cause relational issues. But, you know, you have to stand up for yourself at a certain point. You can't just take that forever or you'll, you will be that forever. And you will be, if you, if you just take the shit, man, you're going to get shit on. Like you you have to, you know, you don't have to, you don't have to be an asshole, but like you have to, either remove yourself from the situation or you know rise to the occasion and uh for me it was you know i've been writing songs for a long time but when this started coming together it was all just like the catharsis it was just it was like this is everything i've always wanted to say but i've just never i never had the strength or confidence to say it now i do but it took it was a lot of suffering you know to get there 
and I, I messed up a lot, man. But uh, you know, you can mess up a lot and still end up okay on the other side. But uh, yeah, that that that's how I I dealt with it wrong. But now I I dealt with it, I think correctly, and I feel a lot better. And you know, I'm not going to bed. You know, you know, I'm not stressing when I'm going to bed. I'm I'm sleeping soundly, and I uh, I feel good even about the mistakes. You know. That's per- that's amazing that you're figuring this all out so young because it took me like 40 years and you're learning learning this shit in your 20s. That's amazing. Uh, and that sounds like that's how you got this gig, right? It's because you said, no, I don't want to play bass. I'm a singer. Yes, that, that really is. It really is part of it, man. Uh, Perfect. Just so stick my, to your guns is kind of the lesson there, right? Yeah. yeah. If you're really good at something, keep getting better at it. And uh and if, if you know you're good at it, like, don't listen to that shit when people are trying to tell you that, oh, you're not good enough, man. People literally said that to me, that you're not good enough. Really? People literally, literally to you. said that. I heard you yeah. sing, man. It's, it blew me away. I was like, because I, I wasn't, you know, when they said, oh, uh, we want you to interview the singer. I was like, okay, let me check out his stuff. And I was like, whoa, this this guy can, okay, let's do this. Like, I'll have him on my show. I like it. I appreciate that, man. Um, but, but yeah, people definitely said that to me, um, when I was, when I was younger all the time, I was like, Oh, well, why don't you do a different kind of music? Well, why don't you go, you could, you could go back to school. You're so good at school, you know, stuff like that. Uh, if you really are confident in something and you're really good at it, don't, don't give up on it. You well, yeah, cause did you have people also telling you that you were good and that you were a good singer and that you should pursue that? Of course. Yeah. But you know, that stuff is not nearly as loud in your brain as as the the people you love and trust and the people that you 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 know you uh you confide in saying hey man like i don't know if this is the right way to go <laughs> you know that shit hurts man. yeah well i'm glad that you stuck with it and obviously you're kicking ass you're in a band with jason hook you guys are opening it up for huge bands and uh i think it's just going to continue to grow what when is the album coming out there's two singles out now but yes um I don't know if I'm at liberty, but I will say that there is a new song coming out in the middle of next month. But the whole album is going to be coming out at the beginning of next year, probably like January, February, hopefully closer to January if things go uh, the way that I would like them to go. But um, yeah, definitely early next year, first quarter. Okay. Cool. Yeah. And then uh lack of respect song and halo are both out. Halo is really cool too. It's heavy, but it's also kind of melodic, which uh, mm-hmm. kind of sounds like a theme with the music. Yeah. Um, of course. I, I mean, I, I want to rope, I, I want to rope people in and, uh, you know, get them going on the singing and then, you know, show them what we can do when, uh, when we want to get heavy. So, uh, you know, we all love heavy music, but we also love songs. So what's most important that is, is that, it's a song and that there's something to hold on to even lack of respect. A heavy song has a, a sing singing chorus that, you know, gets stuck in your head that you can sing along to that people can relate to. So yeah, that's definitely the priority. Yeah. Very cool. I mean, do you feel like you, like your band and yourself, are you guys the next generation of rock? Cause these older guys, I mean, like what we talked about, like kiss, I mean, kiss is retiring. So Somebody's got to yeah. fill these stadiums. Is it going to be you? Well, um, yeah, I don't care if I get shit for it, but the answer is absolutely. Because if you look at the, the fascinating thing on, on all this is on all the, the whole rock music thing. It's just, you know, we're always talking about, oh, rock's dying. Metal's dying. It's all dying. It's dying, dying is, is all you hear. And, uh, you know, when when we were young, that festival you're familiar uh, or uh, Sick New World, those Vegas festivals that they did, where they took uh, all the most popular bands from 15, 20 years ago and put them all in one bill. That that's cool. That's great. I would love to see all those bands at, at, in the same day. But like, where is the young band? There's not a single young band. There's like two or three. All the festivals that you see, the Rock Oklahoma Rock Bill, it's like. Corn, nine inch nails, slipknot every time. Yeah. Because that's, right. what people, that's what people want to see. I, I understand that. That's what people want to see. But there's room. There's room for new blood. And and that's what I want to be. And and the other guys, we're, you know, we're all very on the same page with that. And and Jason says this thing that which I love. 
And he says, I, I see what everyone else is doing, and I want to just do the opposite of what everyone else is doing. Because, I mean, I, I listen to lots of, I, I love uh, like metal, and but I, I love metal core too, that sort of uh, 2000s to, I mean, it's still going on now, but pretty much every band sounds exactly the same. You could pick, you know, a, a song from their newer records and they all sound, you know, it's, it's you know, MIDI 808 hi-hat, uh, you know, sing-songy verse into a big epic chorus. To be honest with you, I think everyone is ripping off Ronnie, actually. But uh, it, it, there need, there's, there's like a desperate need. We're an actual band, dude. We play guitar and like we like we have actual musicians and uh, like you know we're actually playing like we're playing fucking rock metal rock and metal and we're 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 actually playing it's an actual band it's not like it's not super digital like we're using real amps and like we're using the two the we got the flashy two bass pedals and I'm actually singing all this shit man I train for thousands of hours on my vocals to get them in like the Tip top shape they could possibly be in so that I could deliver this shit every single night. And the other guys, it's the same thing. Like these guys are are like world class musicians, dude. Like we have put in the work. We are actual highly skilled musicians. And I, you know, I'm sure people are gonna clip that and say, "What a douche!" He really <laughs> says that about himself. I think I get to say it about myself when I've spent you know thousands of hours doing it. And like yeah. these people on the internet haven't spent five minutes on anything. So like, I think I have the right to say that. Um, so yeah. And, and if you don't believe me, come to a show, you know, it's like, you'll see you that it's a, it, it's a real band and uh, we're going to make a mark because we don't sound like everybody else. And uh, it's different. And it's, it's sort of, it has a touch of the uh, touch of what you've heard before, but it's refreshing. It's new. Um, and you know, even singers, I think a lot of singers sound the same. I think a lot of people are trying to do, um, oh man, I can't remember his, his, uh, his name, Adam from Three Days Grace. I think oh. a lot of people are trying to sound like him. Uh, and, and uh, you know, it was Eddie Vedder in the 2000s. You know, everyone was trying to sound like Eddie Vedder. And, uh, and now I, I think it's sort of Three Days Grace or Chester Bennington. Everyone's trying to sound like that. I don't sound like any of those guys, you know, I don't, I don't, I, uh, I, I try my best to sound like me. Um, and I, I'm not trying to, you know, fit a, fit a mold anymore. So it's like, we're, we are ourselves and we're real big. So Good. I think, it, I think it's going to work out. <laughs> yes. I think it's going to be great. Well, I fucking love it. I uh, love your attitude. It's great. Um, I'll let you get out of here. The last thing um, I just always end promoting a charity, something good for the world. Is there a charity or cause that you, want to promote here at the end yeah for sure uh i would say i would say make a wish is is the number one for me okay uh, that, that stuff means a lot to me and i think it makes a really big difference in uh you know in those kids lives so okay cool i'll put that in the show notes along with the the flat the black uh, i think i think you guys have a website or a, a spotify yeah, flat page. Black. Uh, it's a flat black music.com uh, all the merch is up there all the tour dates cool whatever you need all right, cool. I hope to catch a show. If you guys come to Phoenix, I'll hit you up. Yeah, man. Yeah, definitely send me a message, and we'll make sure that you get in there, no problem. Okay, thanks. See you later, Wes. Thanks, man. Have a good one. You too. Bye-bye. Thank you for taking the time to listen to the full podcast episode. Please help support our guests by following them on social media and purchasing their products, whether it be a book, album, film, or other thing. And if you have a few extra dollars, please consider donating it to their favorite charity. If you want to support the show, you can like, share, and comment on this episode on social media and YouTube. And if you want to go the extra mile, you can give us a rating or review on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or Google Podcasts. Finally, make sure you're subscribed to the show on YouTube for the video versions and other exclusive content. We appreciate your support. Have a great rest of your day and shoot for the moon.